about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we Hi there, and welcome to our first um, A-Level Sociology live stream of 2022. Um, and it's great that so many of you are joining us live this evening. Um, and of course, many more um, watch us on catch up over the coming weeks. And so welcome to both of you, both those who are watching live and those who are watching us later. I am joined this evening by, as ever, Craig Gelling, and also by Katie Tyler. And it's lovely to see you both. Thanks very much for joining us this evening. Um, we've got, ha, hiya. <laughs> we've got, um, as I say, a half an hour or so of activities focusing on educational achievement and looking at in terms of some of the skills that students need to use in the exam. So thinking about application skills, analysis skills, evaluation skills this evening, as well as a bit of knowledge as well. Um, so we're going to get cracking I think pretty much straight away is there anything I need to do um housekeeping before we get going um if you're watching live I don't think so I was gonna say if you're watching live do uh join in we'd love to hear from you you can type into the chat window as some of you are already doing in the live chat window it's, and lots of you saying hi and so we'll say hi back hello um so you can put your answers in there sometimes it'll just be a b or c sometimes you need you to write a bit more some extended responses um if you're watching on catch up, obviously you don't have the live chat window to type into, but you do have the opportunity to potentially pause the video and have a little bit longer or to answer some of these questions. OK, let's get straight over to the PowerPoint. And I think we're starting with a, a activity from Craig. We are, Duncan. Thank you. Um... Well, we're back after five weeks off, so sort of like let's get straight into it. Um, right, well, we've got a new activity for you today. In fact, we've got a lot of new activities for you today. Um, we're going to start out with what we call the 
data lab. And clearly the people who over at Cheetah to You have kind of put a nice little picture on the side, which is me shortly after the exams this year. Um, so sort of like kind of tearing my hair out. But let's have a look at the data. Hello, yep, yeah, we're still there. <laughs> okay, so if we look at the data, um, on your screen, what you've got is you've got um, a, a table. And on the table, sort of like there are two lines um, which identify trends in achievement over the last um, over five years recently. I didn't put 2020 and 2021 in there because it would kind of skew the table um, for reasons that, you know, obviously you, you're probably aware of. What you will see on, on the data um, tab is line, the orange line, which um, indicates uh, pupils not on free school meals is significantly higher than the other line, which is pupils on free school meals. And even though there have been some ups and downs um, across those five years, that gap has remained pretty consistent. What we're going to ask you to do is to identify the reasons why there is a gap in that data. Why is it that other pupils achieve higher than pupils on free school meals, okay? So if you put your answers um, on the right hand, in the, in the, sorry, in the chat box, in the right hand column, and you can just put your answers down there. I think we've got a clock that starts us off. Is that right, Duncan? Yeah, here we go. Oh, sorry. Oh, Duncan's revealed some of the answers if you were very I quick. Uh, what you need to do is you need to put the answers, uh, you need to type your answers into the chat box on the right hand side. So what are some of the reasons why pupils on free school meals underachieve in comparison to their peers? Okay, so we've got some really good answers coming through here. Um, Namers, sort of like material deprivation, cultural deprivation. Um, okay, it looks like we're having a few little technical problems there, but that should be okay. Uh, material deprivation, cultural capital from um, Mimping. Material deprivation. Material and cultural deprivation. Lots of people getting those answers in there. Lack of cultural capital. Really good responses. Uh, we've got labeling. Cultural deprivation, what we call cultural differences. Um, Self-fulfilling prophecy. Lack of access to cultural capital. Uh, EAL, I'm assuming is English as an additional language. Labeling, economic deprivation. Isabel's coming with internal factors like labeling and bullying can impact the educational achievement. Uh, Tiggy's put labeling and Caitlin has come up with material deprivation. Wow, there's lots of really good responses from subcultures as well has come up. Uh, diet and housing, yeah, some fantastic responses. Everyone's obviously clearly been um, revising their, their social class and, ed and educational achievement here. Uh, material deprivation and labeling, Candice has come through with poor diet, lack of nutrition, um, okay, lower concentration, cookie, um, cookies come through with teacher labeling. Let's have a look at those responses, Duncan, because I think we, we've pretty much nailed most of those. I think the only one that um, I don't think anybody mentioned was setting and streaming, although pretty much all the others were covered. Yes, material deprivation can have an impact on uh, pupil's achievement. And obviously, within material deprivation, we're looking at things like um, poor diet, lack of nutrition, um, lower levels of concentration, um, poor housing, absentee absences um, from school. Also, things like caring responsibilities, having to pick up with the siblings, not having enough space to do work. Um, obviously, all these are sort of like um, uh, reasons that you could use to answer a question on something like social class and education. Cultural capital and cultural background we've had as well. Lots of good responses. Um, teacher expectations, labelling, setting and streaming and subcultures. Um, quite a, a lot there. Some people are naming some theorists as well. Feinstein is in there as well. Um, some really, really good responses to that activity. Um, very impressed. Um, so now we're going to pass over to Katie for our next activity, which is a value wheel. Oh, hi guys. Yeah, so what we're gonna look at today is some evaluation. And I know how important this is, and I know you know how important it is, particularly for your essays and your 10 markers. What we're gonna focus on is looking at a couple of statements that 
potentially students might write. Um, and what we'd like you to do is think of an evaluative point against that. So it could be um, either for or against. Uh, you'll sort of see in a minute which sort of examples we want. Um, and obviously, as you know, evaluation is so important, particularly uh, to get those sort of higher end marks and those top band marks. So um, without waiting, let's, well, let's start. Let's do it. Let's look at the first one. So a student has written in an essay maybe about class, maybe also with about policy. Free school meals help to reduce the social class divide in education. What we'd like you to do is think of an evaluative point, which is a, let's go and see, drum roll. Which one's going to be? <laughs> it is, I shouldn't like do that in case of the sound. That's a great one. It's a criticism. Okay, so um, what we want to think is, what is the criticism of this point? So something that would um, criticise this point. Are we ready there, Duncan, for the timer on that? Or is there no timer? <laughs> okay, so sorry, I was muted. There isn't a clock on this one. Sorry, so people just want to have it. <laughs> no, it's all right. I was waiting for <laughs> I it. It. Okay, so we just get some points. Let's think of the value of two points and let's get them type in. I, I was slightly worried Duncan had been ambushed by cake then. You know, that sort of like, you know, I wish. Gone off, off line. <laughs> I was like, where's he gone? Is there a, I, is there a timer for you? Said, what's going okay, on? So. I've been walking yeah. around Whitehall trying to get ambushed by cake all week. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, happen. any uh, criticisms we can make of the use? Okay, so, yeah, excellent. We've got the idea that they can be stigmatised and students who have so got two points here. They've got students that may be stigmatised and then maybe as a result might not um, apply for it. We've also got the fact that students... Um, they don't maybe actually improve other factors. So that's really good because a lot of time with students' material deprivation, they sometimes forget about the fact with poor housing and lack of studying space, which is amazing. Excellent la labelling as well that nicely links into the stigmatised identities. You've also got labelling again um, when they're identified as free school meals. Any other sort of criticisms we can think of? Just see if we can sort of see any more that come through. Um, yeah, the, yeah, lots of students don't actually apply for them. They get stigmatised. Students feel labelled. They may become a self-fulfilling mm. prophecy. Yeah, so lots linked to that. That's brilliant. I okay. think it's a really good, good really good, um, good suggestions, really good aren't they? Of, yeah, I think, and mm -hmm. percentages there as well. Kind of go beyond. Okay, so got, I was going to say, they kind of go yeah. beyond what we've got, but really I give us some of the so, reasons definitely. for it. Yeah, so we've got the idea that obviously um, the free school meals consistently have a lower educational achievement on average than others, suggesting that it's not been effective. And actually, that's quite a bland evaluation. You've gone way above that by giving particular uh, mm -hmm. examples. Other, oh, we've got there, we've got setting and streaming to lower students', students uh, bands due to free school meals. Um, so actually, you've got that fact that the labelling may then impact on the setting and streaming as well. You potentially could also, yeah, free school meals are unlikely to afford... Uh, other educational items and leads gap in education mm -hmm. sort of mirrors what's already been said. So some really great points there. Um, you might also want to add on there, like obviously the more contemporary example with obviously the campaign by Marcus Rashford, that obviously students didn't get free school meals initially. So let's, um, that, and that keeps us in contemporary as well. Okay, the next one is school is meritocratic. Uh, so what we're going to look for, let's drum roll again. Oh, oh University of Sterling report. Look at that. I know, just seeing that. It's amazing. Really good contemporary research. Mm. Okay. Uh, so we yeah. want evidence here to support or reject the claim that school is meritocratic. I'm going to get my words out there. So let's get some <laughs> ideas down. I reckon looking at some of the answers we've had so far on this, we're going to get yeah, gonna, some answers. Yeah. They're going to go way beyond our short one on here yeah, as well. But that's, that's, that's brilliant. That's what we want I'm to I'm really see. interested about that University of Sterling report. Value that we'll probably, that's it. Oh, no, I'm going to write that down. Uh, cookie. You should be up here doing this. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, sorry. That sounds like I was dismissing you, Katie, there. No. <laughs> um, yeah, that is a really good response. I mean, particularly yeah. sort of like when you look at it being sort of like a very contemporary um, yeah, source. Yeah, example. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good response. It's always okay, really so good yeah. to make that, that kind of judgment. Okay, ethnic uh, curriculum. So obviously with the ethnocentric curriculum, it's more to do with ethnicity rather than social class, but I can see the point that's happening there regards that it is centric. You've got the idea, yeah, uh, students from ethnic minorities are more likely to be placed in lower sets. That would suggest that it isn't meritocratic. Um, hopefully I'm going to get some ideas from this. Um, you've also got the fact that the myth of meritocracy, which obviously Bowles yeah. and Kinsey's talked about. Excellent there. You've got the idea of gender achievement. So 
bringing that in there. You've got the uh, Sasha talks about the old boys network. Uh, we've also got Evie's idea the um, teachers' expectations and obviously the middle class resonates with the vocabulary. So linking in maybe to uh, Bernstein. We've also got the wow. idea of over the most of the students admitted to Ca- uh, Cambridge and Oxford obviously come from private schools like Eton. We've got some a lovely bit of habitus, brilliant M. There we go. <laughs> Ideal pupil. Um, we've also got the idea that again setting and streaming. Um, we've also got oh yeah, there we go. Well done, Aaron. Now you remember. So lots coming in, and we've got the halo effect, which is obviously positive labelling um, potentially, and those students then obviously do better in school so linking into the ideal people and the work of kd so so lots of stuff there lots of ideas so those people that have got a lot of people being active but hopefully those people that are the other 55 people are getting some ideas as well and are working along with this um can we just reveal our less adequate answer please <laughs> yes it's definitely a lot briefer than those and it's great to see the you know the detail this is what you want so this is just like yeah. the uh the basics if you like but you want to especially when we're looking for evidence you want those studies etc that you want to add there to yes to support so it. we've got that idea of that correlation between uh, income and an education achievement so is it meritocratic if working class kids are more likely to achieve but you've talked about gender you've talked about ethnicity you've got catchment area parentocracy so but that, uh, that, that um guys. i was just gonna say the graph that uh, craig shared at the start really is a, is a good mm. bit of evidence really to question whether school's meritocratic isn't it yeah yeah, definitely. Oh, brilliant. Well done, guys. You should be proud of yourself. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Okay. Um, thanks, Katie. Uh, go on. Sorry, Junk, who you about to say something? I wasn't. I was just saying, hand it over to Craig. Don't worry. I don't need oh, to say okay. that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. I thought you were going to add something there. Yeah. Okay. So this activity, we're going to look at the skill of application. Uh, it's what's called a connection spinner. and um, But we're going to use this to... Um, to test your kind of knowledge on methods in context, right? So we've been a bit sneaky here. We're talking about educational achievement, but we're gonna think about sort of like how we might apply some of the different research methods to investigating differences in educational achievement. So we're gonna look at how we might research material deprivation. Now, if we could go to the next screen, please, Duncan. What you will see on here is what um, we've got a number of different methods around the outside of the circle and the spinner will go round and will point to one of these methods. And what you have to do is you have to identify a strength or limitation of using that method to investigate material deprivation, right? Because this is what you have to do for the methods in context question. And um, you have to be able to sort of like apply your knowledge of research methods to a specific context. Um, so say, for example, you've got official statistics, you would have to sort of like talk about why official statistics might be an advantage, what, what might be an advantage of official statistics for investigating material deprivation, what might be a disadvantage. So what we're going to look at here is um, we're going to do, sorry, what we're going to do next is we're going to spin the spinner and it will land on one of these six different methods that we could use for material deprivation. It's like Michael McIntyre's The Wheel. <laughs> I've never seen that, but yeah, yeah, cool. Maybe <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. So what you have to do is give me either a strength or a limitation of using self-completion questionnaires to investigate material deprivation. Now, of course, self-completion questionnaires are the questionnaires that are given to people. They take them away and then they bring them back. So what might be a strength or limitation of using it and be specific to the context. You have to think about who you are researching and the topic you are researching as well as what you are researching. OK, so let's look at some of the responses there. OK, so I think we've got a timer on this one, have we? Or are all timers gone now? <laughs> I don't. I don't think we do have a timer on this one. No, just we don't have a timer on this one. Okay, we don't have a timer on this one. So let's just look at some of the responses then. Okay, so Aaron is saying that people can lie. Yeah, we would need to apply that to the context. Why might people who suffer from material deprivation lie, or why might people um, lie about their income? Students may feel embarrassed, so won't complete the questionnaire accurately. Is a good one. Low response rates, socially desirable answers. Again, be sure to sort of like say why they might give socially desirable answers based on the topic. Um, deception, can't tell if you're being lied to. Okay, again, focus on why this might be important for people who are investigating mat- uh, material deprivation. 
and uh, socially desirable, too embarrassed, and uh, materially deprived. Okay, it's a good good response. That's the type of thing you need to do in a methods in context question. Um, the person might not feel may feel embarrassed. Lower classes may be illiterate or underrepresented. Okay, may have uh, may have difficulties um, completing the questionnaire. Yeah. Okay. Um, Bernstein and restricted codes. So that's a good one. You might have to develop that response a little bit and sort of like suggest why certain groups may may be more likely um, may struggle to sort of like um, you know you you may need to sort of like, um, you may need to write the questions so they're easily understandable. And uh, maybe people are much better than them, so they feel embarrassed and materially deprived. Mm. Okay, lots of people picking up on this this um, idea that a social stigma attached to material deprivation, um, which is really good because let's have a look at what our response was. Yeah, I'd put that as well. That um, you know, a benefit of using a self completion questionnaire is that people would be able to fill in their income away from others. So the research is not there to see what their income is. They could fill them in anonymously. There are some other great responses coming in here as well. Not enough time if materially deprived, so they may not return it because they're working more than one job. Um, may be reluctant to provide honest or valid answers as they will have to recognize that they're living in poverty. That's a great answer there. Um, anonymity, okay, well that would be a benefit of sort of like a self-completion questionnaire for people with material deprivation, particularly if they're discussing their income or their financial circumstances. So you develop that point a little bit to talk about why people would need to be anonymous. But some really good responses there. Let's give it another spin and see if we can have a go um, again. That's the same question. Material deprivation, let's use another type of research method to investigate it. And again, we're looking for a strength or limitation. Let's so go ahead, Duncan, give it a let's, spin. Let's hope it doesn't land on the same one again. Let's see. We'd have to spin it again. We'd just have to spin it again. We could be going all night if it keeps on landing on the same one. Oh, okay. So we've landed, landed on questionnaires, um, but now it's web-based questionnaires, which is a very common research method that has been used, particularly over the last two years for obvious reasons. But web-based questionnaires, what might be a strength or a limitation of sending an internet-based questionnaire to ask people about material deprivation? Let's look at some of our responses here. Okay, so quick and easy to complete, lack of understanding. Okay, but again, focus on the context. Why might people who are suffering from material deprivation not do that? Uh, Sasha may not have access to the internet. Great, good response there. May not get the volunteers, the correct sample. Lack of access to the internet is coming through. There's quite a few on here, anonymous. Um, lack of time. Students in poverty may not have access to the internet. We saw a lot of this during COVID, didn't we? Um, lots of data, uh, lots of um, mobile phone providers um, giving away free data. There was lots of um, issues with students being able to do homeschooling. Um, so yeah, um, let's look at our response, Duncan. There you go, lower response rate because pupils do not have internet access. So lots of you did get that technological deprivation. Nice term there. Um, from Hannah, I think technological deprivation, that's a new one, but it's a really good, really descriptive response. So there you go, that is our connection. And we're now gonna move back to Katie to look at our Stepping Stones activity. Hi guys, so yeah, as the name suggests, it's Stepping Stones. So what we're gonna be doing here is um, looking at sort of the cause and effect, the link between sort of the input and the output. So if I can just show the first one, it might make it a little bit easy for you to understand. So we've got teacher labeling at the top. What I would like you guys to do is think of some key concepts, some names, uh, studies, uh, even sort of research findings would link that to underachievement. And what you've got to think of is two uh, sort of links between the two steps that you can get to. Um, so it can be it, any sort of keyword or any sort of study. Obviously, you've got to have a link between them, you can't plonk anything in. Um, <laughs> if you want to stretch yourself a little bit, you might be putting some keywords, but you might want to sort of add a little sort of sentence to say how you've linked the two. Um, so, off you go. We haven't got a timer assume for this one either. So we've got no, the no idea. Timer. If you can try and put two down so we can sort of see the links, so we've got uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, how can we then link self-fulfilling prophecy to underachievement potentially? So yeah, lack of engagement work that then for causes underachievement. Brilliant. Yeah, so halo effect. Um, again, 
how would that then link potentially? Uh, yet yeah, labeling self fulfilling prophecy, streaming. Okay, so then students are assumed as labeled, self fulfill their label, then maybe be put into bottom streams, may form anti school subcultures as a result of maybe labeling, create master status. Yes, yeah, so we've got Sasha here, self fulfilling prophecy causes an anti school subculture, which then leads to underachievement. Uh, some really, really good responses. Oh, yeah. Beck has some nice names. We've talk- oh, this is interesting. You mentioned sort of gender here, so we've got the idea that girls might be labelled more positive, living to pro school com- mm-hmm. schools, com- ugh, school subcultures, so won't underachieve. We've got Rosenthal and Jacobs done something. They're coming so quick that I can't even read them. They're going. Some there was, reports, one, there was one about Gilborn and Noodle and um, internalising labels. Internalisation. Oh, internalising yeah. that label. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've got set and streaming again, which is the second point, and then self fulfilling prophecy of that thing that. Excellent. So we've got the ones we've got, although all of those are brilliant, is students will uh, internalise that label, which then will then cause them to self-fulfill it. So we just put an extra layer onto that. And then obviously you can use any of your ones, which is obviously uh, joining subcultures or, you know, teachers then responding to them and putting them into bottom sets, which Mm -hmm. then cause them to underachieve. Some great things there. Let's move on to the next one. Um, Oops, 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 oops. (laughs) I did not see anything. Okay, so we've got. <laughs> if you blinked, blink, you missed it. <laughs> we've got the national curriculum at the top. What we want to think about is the focus is ethnic groups and why they may underachieve. Obviously, it's some ethnic groups, not all. And um, so, yeah, let's have some. Hopefully, you didn't see the first one. Uh, so, off we go. Can we make a link between national curriculum and ethnic groups underachieving? Some of them. Yeah, <laughs> well spotted there, Em. Uh, the ethnocentric curriculum. So maybe how does the ethnocentric cu- curriculum cause underachievement? What's the next stepping stone between that? Yeah, so you've got ethnic set, uh, centric curriculum, then the students feel less valued. They feel like they're not like your pupil. You've also got cultural differences because of the ethnocentric curriculum. You maybe have uh, sort of language barriers potentially, yeah. Um, we've got the ethnocentric quickly and maybe uh, cultural deprivation you've got racism maybe as a result of that within the curriculum um, Charlie's got, set got and a sociology month tomorrow yeah I good just luck. saw that um, good luck uh, majority of school is yet yeah, culturally biased and set, yeah, yeah. so we've got some examples there of Shakespeare ethnocentric culturally different you've got the students again internalising those labels probably from the ethnocentric curriculum brilliant we've got a bit of my favourite sociologist Louise Arch there with people's identities which again are internalised you can have then yet yeah, cause students to uh, reject that which is full of study national curriculum again ethnocentric lack of culture couple equals um, un- underachievement we've got yeah demotivates think, the students no one's got loads there I think Alison's they, oh got goodness, one quite similar they keep similar. on coming I, I cannot get over this um, I think Alison's is quite similar to yours isn't it about the underrepresentation mm-hmm. I think um, should yeah. we have a look at what you what, we yeah, say got. we've got? There. Yeah, ethnocentric curriculum, which then could be cause a lack of romance, which someone spoke about Shakespeare and sort of the curriculum and predominantly the students, teachers as well. Um, mm. Brilliant. Putting streams and viewed less able in the work. So there's lots of different examples and really that's the key. That would frame your paragraph really. And then obviously you can then evaluate this. Just on that okay. point, Katie, there's quite a few people, just, just can I interject a second? There's a lot of people sort of like there who put sort of like things like linguistic differences and language differences. Mm. Um, last year, um, data that's come out said actually students who mm-hmm. had um, English as an additional language did better than, mm. um, than native speakers in exams. So that is yeah. a very big evaluation point because there are lots of, uh, lots of studies that are, uh, that lots of us think are, are, are quite outdated now. Um, mm. that are, put, are in some of the textbooks. And it's worth challenging that idea, particularly by using that data that English as a, sorry, students who had English as a second language actually performed better than native yeah. speakers. And even yeah, over and quite I think a, that's certainly something to point out there. Yeah, even over quite a long time, there's quite a lot of data to suggest that by, mm. you know, by secondary school, mm. it, you know, and let, apart from for perhaps new, new migrants who are learning English, <laughs> you know, then, mm. then sort of thing. It's not really a, a significant factor. No. Yeah, no. you go back I mean, to things like the Swan Report, don't you? You go back to the Swan Report mm. in the 1980s, which sort of like suggested that um, that language um, isn't, a, isn't a huge factor. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. No, definitely. And there's lots, there's lots of like, valid points that have been put out. There was something that popped in my head mm-hmm. and popped back out again. Oh yeah, I suppose it was a really good actually article the other day that I saw about if not done well, it can feel quite tokenistic and actually do more harm, harm than good in sometimes when the mm-hmm. when the curriculum is so ethnocentric and then they have sort mm-hmm. of days or etc. So um, mm-hmm. we've got one here. I'm conscious of time. So if yeah. we, um, I'm just going to quickly. I'm just going to I'm just gonna quickly. Mind, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly uh, cheer on Hannah though for mentioning Driver and Ballard. And that, you know, that oh, brilliant! Yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah actually sorry. You've got support families. Yeah. Do you mind yeah. Duncan just showing this? Just to sort of yeah, yeah. So you can show it all. Just because I think of, I'm just conscious of time, and I know that's, yeah, that's really fine. wonderful other activities. Um, another one, obviously, parentocracy linked into the marketization may come up. Um, some some students they do find that little sort of niche part of the curriculum sometimes a bit more challenging so that's why I chose this one and it's really looking at how parentocracy can cause underachievement so it's looking at out of school factors um, and the idea that parents have got time to um, sort of play the system sort of the sharp elbow of the middle classes basically um, we've got some ideas so did I, did, <laughs> I don't know if I sort of said that too to um, yeah arguably um, we've also got the idea you've just said there is obviously linked into other external factors which is material deprivation which is along great along the same lines uh, and obviously if they're unable to move um, house because of the fact maybe on income support that makes it really difficult. Um, we've also got the idea of the ideology and the encouragement, uh, whereas it's not so much maybe the middle working class parents don't encourage you so they ha- maybe not have the, the cultural capital in order to coach in the same way, yes, yeah, so the cultural economic capital. So some really good ideas and there's quite a lot of breadth within that. I'm going to stop because I could go on all night <laughs> talking about it. Um, <laughs> and we, would, we, and we would enjoy it immensely. <laughs> yeah. um, but I will pass it on. Sorry, thank you. Well done, guys, by the way. Yeah, very good. Um, I'm just going to do a very quick go through. This is my favourite activity, but we've got a really good um, Craig activity still to go. So I will do this one quite quickly. Cause, um, but this this is, um, if you're familiar with like Richard Osman's House of Games or something like that, you'll have an idea of this. It's one where you, uh, there's an example on the screen, which is, which is not sociological, where you've got an elephant and you've got what's the southernmost continent in the world, home to the South Pole. It's elephant. Antarctica, elephant and Antarctica, and you smash them together. So the end of the first word links to the start of the second word. So we've got some of these that are sociological, or at least the clue on the right hand side is sociological, the picture is <laughs> not. So we've got putting students in all classes based on their ability. It has been mentioned today already, and the picture is the first bit. Um, and it's what's missing under the question mark, essentially, on the labelling of that geographical diagram. Oh, so M has got the uh, the the absolutely correct that the uh, it is streaming. Quite streaming. It is streaming. It is just to where uh, the the word smash bit of it is downstreaming. But you're right. It's streaming was the answer to the <laughs> sociological bit. The, the bit on the the missing bit on the label was downstream. Downstreaming. Streaming. Sure okay yeah just to say for viewers who are new to this duncan does this every week I love and by it. the end of last term by the end of last term students were smashing it oh, when i did boy. it i did i did snow white collar crime and nobody got it <laughs> and then and i then did, you did one, what was it a panopti- one, and Mar- got marzi, it there, marzi panoptican i think it was <laughs> yeah um okay knowledge and skills are valuable in a particular field um again it's a term that's been used today and we've got a photograph of a alternative eighties rock band there who you probably <laughs> probably won't recognise, yeah. but, but yeah, your parents might like them or whatever. Um, oh. It's a particular term. Uh, someone's got specialised skills. It's a particular term relating to um, skills, knowledge, cultural. Oh, I've used blah blah. I've given it away. Um, <laughs> possibly attitudes. Possibly ideas. Um, I don't even know who the band are. This is what it, I'm working. I'm, I'm focusing on that. Is um, that Billy okay. Idol? It isn't Billy Idol. It's Billy Duffy, actually, the one who looks like Billy Idol, who was the guitarist oh. in this band. Who had a big hit with She Sells Sanctuary. And, uh, that might help. Oh, uh, yeah. oh well, oh, uh, yeah, 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 right. people have got the people. Oh, have got somebody, these, somebody's got it. Loads somebody's of people have got, got the term. Well the term is well, Charlie, cultural M. capital. The group is the cult, <laughs> and so it was the cultural capital, the cult and cultural capital. I know these are hard. It's a good. You'll be pleased to be get to uh, to uh, Craig's final activity in a minute. Mm. Um, the last one, a group that is opposed to the values of the school, like oh Kimberly, yeah, well done, you got the cult. Um, a group that is opposed to the values of the school, like Willis's lads, um, and we've got a bottle of some sort of wine. 
maybe in Tuscany on the left hand side of the picture. Can you work out what the the, the pictures are really like confusing me? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm like I need to almost yeah sorry. So some people Ooh, I think have already got the the sociological term, which is the important bit, of course. Does anyone want to try and link it? Wine. Does anyone like want to link that. it to the particular type of wine or grape? Maybe that Isn't one. Isn't that was... not an example of cultural just... capital? I it know, is. A, it is absolutely. It's a good example of cultural capital, isn't it? That I'm. I'm I, yeah. I, I must admit, I don't have much. I like the uh, I like that wine, lad wine lad culture. Wine lad culture. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a. It's Chianti. Oh, school. <laughs> it's Chianti school. Chianti school. Oh, <laughs> oh dear me. Uh, yeah. Oh well. Never mind. You'll be oh. relieved to know that I'm handing back to Craig for our final activity. <laughs> oh, never mind. Um, yeah, I had ten weeks Standing of that last year. <laughs> never mind. Okay, so um, well, our last. Sorry. Oh, someone's got a Sauvignon oh, very... Sauvignon school Sauvignon culture. That Sauvignon one works. Sauvignon that one works. Sauvignon that one works. That one works. Yeah. It does. <laughs> you do realise that Duncan will use that in a couple of weeks' time. I had, um, I had um, right, okay. yesterday on Monday in politics. Someone came up with the wrong answer, but it was potato ni Blair, and I'm going to use that one. Potato ni Blair, and what I will use. Um, anyway, sorry. Carry on. You'll never be. You'll never be Joey Tribbiani. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. That one doesn't. Um, <laughs> no, it doesn't. But yeah, it's still better. Right. Okay. So our last, very, very last activity. Now that we've kind of divulged into our own little kind of. Um, chat for a little about five minutes uh, our last activity is what's called the application gallery you're going to see three uh, you're going to see three sets of images um first on the first one we will show you one image and you have to from that image you have to um, come up with a series of sociological concepts so let's have a look at the first image and of course these are linked into achievement this one does have a timer. I knew there was one with a timer. So we can see a picture of a, a young lady, so like who's graduated. What concepts might we link this into in terms of achievement? What concepts might you think of here? What does this remind you of? Educational achievement? Yeah. Particularly focus on the gender of the person. Girls are performing better than boys. Increased status. Oh, nice one. Educational success. Rejection of labels. That's a good one. High achievement comparison to boys at all levels. The gender gap. Hey, girls' achievements. Lots of things here. Particularly, we're looking at reasons for differences in gender gender achievement here. Material cultural deprivation, linguistic differences, ethnocentric curriculum, girls' achievement in schools. That's the overarching kind of theme. Meritocracy. Lots of good responses here. We're looking for reasons really here, sort of like why we can have differences in gender achievement. So we could have looked at this and sort of like seen a girl graduating, increased career aspirations for women, rise of feminism, female role models. Uh, somebody's just come through with rise of feminism just and wise let's hold on to that one for a minute uh self-negating prophecy for afro-caribbean girls changing girls ambitions teacher role models were some really really good responses all we all can we can kind of link in their agenda now we have two images now you have to try and find images that associate with both of these again the wider topic is gender differences in achievement so if we look at these two pictures and what kind of images might you come from? So there is a mum and a daughter um, doing some schoolwork, and there are two children in a science lab, two young girls in a science lab. Okay, good, role models. I don't know if that was for the last one, actually. But... Works for this what one. What concepts might be associated with it? Gender role socialization, nice, that's a good response. Meritocracy, equal opportunities, cultural capital, gist, yeah. Bedroom culture, that's a good one. Gist and wise. Parentocracy, could go with parentocracy there. Middle class attitudes to education, potentially. We're focusing more on gender in this one. Boys typically dominant in science labs, male, male domain subjects. Yeah, that's, that's certainly something that we would discuss. Gender to socialization, men and women in STEM, occupation. Um, the Mitos, uh, Mitos' study, uh, girls socialising to being organised and neat. Um, parents more likely to engage in literacy activity with daughters, that's a really good one. Uh, gist and wise, parents' education. And uh, somebody's asked what bedroom culture is, I'll come to that in a second. The Equality Act. 
okay, closeted activities. Bedroom culture is the idea that girls spend a lot of their social, uh, their time being socialized into quite passive activities, spend more time in the home, whereas boys are more likely to be actively socialized and they are more likely to spend time out of the home. The idea that girls are socialized into being indoors means that they are more likely to have um, educational success. But some of the things that we've put in there as well are better literacy levels. Uh, we talked about bedroom culture, gender socialization. There were some really good ones coming through there. Um, on picture two, subject choice, um, which is one nobody mentioned, but sort of like that, that, there was lots of really good ones. Girls into STEM subjects, gist and wise, girls' ambitions changing, I've seen as well there, female role models, feminization of education all really, really good reasons to explain why girls are achieving better than boys. So now it's time to focus on the boys. We've got three pictures here. Um, what might these three pictures indicate? If we think about boys underachieving in comparison to girls, what might these pictures give us a, a thing of? Somebody's mentioned Diane Ray. Good, excellent. GIST is um, a social policy or initiative called Girls into Science and Technology, uh, which look to promote girls into science and technology subjects. Okay, vocational education, that's a nice one. Anti-school scrub cultures, yeah, good in there. Decline in manual, lobs, uh, manual labor jobs, crisis of identity, gender socialization, anti-school subcultures, lots of really good ones coming through here makes my job so much easier when everyone's getting the right answer all the time. Changing employment, manual traditional masculine jobs, yeah. Leisure activities, with males, yeah. Crisis masculinity, boys outdoor activities do not benefit their literacy skills, really good response there. Gender expectations, uh, socialised to be rough, yeah, rough, more active. I'm loving this music by the way, Duncan. It's good in it. We've gone from like, we've gone from Spanish guitar to sort of like kind of new wave Italian, you know, kind of like Euro pop a little bit. Okay, let's look at our responses. So yeah, lots of you got decline in male industries. And uh, we could have also put the impact of globalization, particularly on, on male on male um, employment. Uh, laddish subcultures and gender socialization, we could have had again. Somebody's mentioned Nike identities, that can be used as well, yeah. And male role models, sort of like the idea that male role models tend to be more athletic um, than academic. Um, okay. So, wow, lots of fantastic responses there. They're absolutely brilliant, aren't they? Can, really? Don't worry. Amazing. You're, you're ahead of the game now with everyone. Yeah. To see we've got this far on the topic, it's just as equally as beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some absolutely on fire in the chat window today, our live audience. Absolutely brilliant. Just a quick note there, if you're looking for more help with your education topic, you can use that QR code there, lots of um, study notes and videos, Craig does loads of great um, topic videos on education you can watch um, and also we do have our exam skills workbook and revision guides and flashcards and all sorts of resources that you can use okay I'm gonna oh I shouldn't do that I'm gonna go yeah, back to it. my <laughs> panel um wow well, well, what what about that then eh amazing well done again cookies I... he or she or they're they're going they keep on going they're like uh, writing yeah, it's still there. there. There's a slight delay. Um, somebody asked earlier on, when do we do these live sessions? Mm -hmm. Every Wednesday at six thirty. Politics tutor to you session. Duncan is a Monday. Monday at four thirty. Right? Yeah, Mon Monday, Monday four thirty. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say actually, there are lots of um, subjects. You know, if you depending on what your A levels you're doing, we've got psychology, we've got law, geography, um, economics, business, uh, politics, sociology, obviously. So uh, and some GCSE ones as well. So you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, there is. Will be an A level psychology session off the top of my head. I don't know when it is, but it will be <laughs> keeping. I, I think it, is it. Is it tomorrow? Is it? it could well be tomorrow. And business. Um, yeah, absolutely. If you subscribe um, to 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 you on YouTube, so there's be a little uh, bell or something you can press to subscribe. Um, you'll find out. I think there there might be an economics one tonight. Oh, it might have been today actually. So next week, if you're looking for economics, but you can watch again, absolutely, and you can watch this again. I think we do do it for Law Candice, absolutely. So <laughs> we, we, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, if you subscribe to Two to You, you can find out all about these. What we're going over next Wednesday? Um, I think we just said family, family, and kind of theoretical views of family. Yeah, I think, I, it was think the, I think it was theories of the family. We got we're going through some things from each of the papers over the next 
few weeks. Mm. If you've enjoyed this session, please uh, click the thumbs up button. Um, uh, it, if we get to um, 30 before we sign off, then um, Katie and, and Craig get a bonus. <laughs> So, um, really? <laughs> not really no but anyway, <laughs> anyway um if you so yeah absolutely if you can stick your thumbs up okay. it helps other people find the videos um and yeah if you uh subscribe you'll find out when we're here but we will always be here well not always necessarily but certainly for <laughs> for the coming weeks we'll be here at half six um on a wednesday Support and it'll be great to... through this uh, next chapter of your educational experience absolutely and it'll be great to see you we're going to get to the 30 as well that, that was obviously a good incentive all right <laughs> cheers guys it was Take care, uh, look after yourself, keep safe bye 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 bye